Okay, let's look at another category. The other category is the category of the man God. There are many religions throughout history who have believed that some human being is actually God. Now, the example the Quran uses is the example of Christianity. There are Christians who claim that Jesus is Allah. That he is not just the son of Allah, but he is Allah. He is one and part and the same as God. And the Quran appeals to such beautiful, commonsensical things. The Quran says, didn't Jesus and his mother, because some people also worship Mary, and there were some Christians who used to believe also Mary was God. Even Catholics say that Mary is the mother of God. The mother of God? God had a mummy. So God, mama, mama, right? Changing God's nappy, yeah? Cleaning God's bum when he's done a poo. This is, what, what, what's that? Mother of God. Huh? Feeding God. What is this? To say that some human being is equal with God. Didn't he walk on the earth and breathe air and eat food and they went to the marketplace? You know, they needed to buy things. They went to the marketplace. See how Allah makes things clear. See how people are deluded away from the truth. What is this? Allah asks us in the Quran. If God wanted to destroy Jesus and Mary and everything in the whole earth, who could stop him? Of course, no one. That means that Allah has power over Jesus and Mary. If God has power over them and they are under the authority of God, they can't be the same as God. They can't be. And what does that mean anyway? To say that something is man and God at the same time. It's an impossibility to say that something, by definition, God is infinite, self-sufficient, and eternal. Human beings, by definition, are temporary, mortal, and needy. How can something be eternal and temporary both at the same time? How can something be self-sufficient and needy both at the same time? How can something be eternal and finite both at the same time? It's, an, it's not a paradox. A paradox means something that seems impossible, but it's not. No, it is an impossibility by definition. Now, there are things that Christians say, God can do anything. Well, I mean, this raises a whole load of questions. God can do anything. I always say, well, do you believe God can do something evil? Now, either they will say, no, God can't do something evil. Or they'll say, well, he can if he wanted to, but he would never do something evil. I say, why not? They say, because God is good. God only does good things. I say, exactly. It is the nature of God. The nature of God is that God is good. And a good God does not do evil things. It is also the nature of God that God is eternal. So an eternal God doesn't become temporary. It's the nature of God that he is self-sufficient, free of any wants and needs. So God does not become needy. Because that contradicts the nature of God. It's that simple. Doesn't that make sense? Isn't that just common sense? Now, you know, the whole idea that God becomes a man. Okay. You see, the problem is this. If you have a piece of string, yeah? And the piece of string is in the shape of a square. Yeah? Let's say... The square represents the, the, the attributes of God. Alright? I'm not saying that God is like a square. I'm just saying it represents. So the square, we replace infinite, eternal, self-sufficient. And we just, instead of all of those words, we just have a square. Yeah? And the circle represents the qualities of a human being. Needy, temporary, finite, mortal, 
You know, we're born, we die, we forget, we need to eat, we need to breathe. So these are our, and let's say all of these, we forget those words, we just use it as a circle. Now, just theoretically, what we could do, perhaps, is we could get the piece of string and change the shape of the piece of string from a square to a circle. So perhaps you could make the square into a circle, and you could make the circle into a square. But what you can't do is make the square into a circle, and it's still a square at the same time. Right? Something can't be blue and red and still be blue. It can't, you can't make blue red and it's still blue. The circle can't be made a square and still be a circle. But that's what they're trying to say. God became a man but was still God. Doesn't make any sense. It's an impossibility. And wait a minute. These Christians are telling everybody in the world that you're going to go to hell forever. If you don't believe something impossible... If you, God is telling us, according to their religion, if we don't believe something absolutely impossible, you'll go to hell forever. So I have to believe something impossible without any proof. Because by definition, you can never prove an impossibility. How can you prove something impossible? You can't. So I have to believe something impossible without proof. It's simple. I'll tell you something. And this is what I always say to every Christian. I say, you're telling me that on the day of judgment, I stand in front of God. And God says to me, why didn't you believe that I became a man? I will say, how could I believe that you, Allah, the eternal self-sufficient creator of the heavens and the earth, was a temporary mortal needy man? How could I believe such a thing? You are far above that. If God then puts me in hell forever... I will never feel for one moment of eternity that God has treated me fairly or justly. But if a Christian is asked by God, how did you, could you say that I was equal, that this human being was me? This human being that ate my food. This human being that breathed my air. This human that depended upon me for, my entire, for his entire existence. You're saying that this human being was equal to me? If that person goes to hell forever, they will know that they deserve to be there. They all know it. That's justice. That is justice. There's one other thing I want us to think about. And I like to give this as an example. Right? Modern science has made us appreciate something really remarkable. And that remarkable thing is exactly how minute we are. Actually, 1,400 years ago, the Prophet Muhammad okay, was also, in reflection of the words of the Qur'an, reminding us of our humble origins. The Qur'an reminds us that you came from a sperm drop, a despised fluid. The Qur'an reminds us of our base origins. The Prophet Muhammad even mentioned that the universe compared to the kursi, wasiya kursi samawati wal ard, and Allah's kursi, his pedestal, extends over the heavens and the earth. How? The Prophet Muhammad said, the universe is like a ring in the desert compared to the kursi, a ring in the desert. Think about that. Think about a ring in the desert. How big is the desert and how small is the ring? And the kursi compared to the arsh, and the arsh means the throne of God, is also like a ring in the desert. Our universe is like a speck. Like a speck. Now, we are on an earth which is a speck. In a ga solar system, which is a speck on the outer spiral of our galaxy, which itself is a speck in the universe, which is a speck before the kursi, which is a speck before the arsh. Now, if I said to anyone, Oi, speck, even if I said it nicely, Oh, beloved speck, Oh, noble speck, Oh, good speck. But if I call you a speck, it doesn't matter how many nice things I put with it, Calling per a person a speck is not a nice thing. But you know what? We are specks. I wouldn't be lying if I called you a speck, and you wouldn't be lying if you called me a speck. But still, we don't like it. How about then if we said that God is like a speck? 
whose kursi extends over the heavens and the earth, which is like a ring before his throne. So how about God? You say that God is like a speck? In fact, you said God became a speck on a speck in a speck in a speck. That's equal with God. That is insulting God. Common sense. That is common sense. Now, some people say, no, we don't believe that Jesus is God. We believe he's the son of God. But that's not any better. That's not any better. Saying that God has a son is not much better. That's still insulting God. That's still saying that the child of God, the son of God, is what? Some insignificant creature? Some speck on the earth? And I don't mean here to belittle Jesus, alayhi salam. Okay, of course, with Allah, he is an honored slave. But that's what we are. We are creatures of God. We are the creation of God. We are the slaves of God. The only difference is, what sort of person are you? Do you believe in God? Do you insult God? Or do you honor God? Do you obey God? Or do you disobey God? That is the only difference between the human beings. Not your caste. Not your color. Not whether you're middle class, upper class, lower class. Okay? None of those things matter to Allah at all. What matters is, are you faithful? Do you honor God? Do you praise God? Do you obey God? That's it. If you do that, God loves you. If you don't, He doesn't. It's that simple. It's that simple. So you're either one or the other. All the other things are artificial and of no concern to God. So this is what is important. So we are all creatures of God. But what does it mean, son of God? Think about that. I mean, I remember there was an Anglican priest who came to the same conclusion. He was saying, what on earth is this supposed to mean, son of God? He, he thought about it himself, and he realized that what is that supposed to mean? You see, when we use the term son, what do we mean by that? My son, right? So first meaning is the literal meaning, begotten son. The word begotten means born of the act of sexual intercourse. Are we saying that God had sex with a woman and had sons? Allah does not, God does not have sons and daughters. God does not have intimate relations with, and, and this is why the Quran asks, if God had a son who is God's wife, because presumably God would not make fornication and adultery illegal for us and then practice it himself. Does God, but of course the, even the concept of God having intercourse is absurd. So obviously God did not have a literal son. God did not have beget a son. Right? Because my son is human like me. By the way, if you have any doubts, you can study early Christian theology. Some early Christians, one of the evidences they actually bought to claim that Jesus was God is exactly this argument. They said... My son is human like me, therefore God's son must be divine like God. That's exactly the argument they brought. Meaning they actually had this idea that God must have literally begotten, literally begotten a son. Which is ascribing a calamity. Allah refutes this time and time and time. In fact, one of the reasons that the Quran has been revealed is to refute those people who say that Allah has a son. This is actually mentioned. Allah mentions this in Surah Al-Kaf. One of the reasons why Allah has revealed the Qur'an is to refute those people. And by the way, this is something that many pagans had this idea. Many pagans had this idea. Zeus, for example. Zeus had mistresses and wives and sun gods and, you know, so, for example, Hercules was the son of Zeus. 
So they had this idea that their sons would marry and, you know, have mistresses from amongst women of the earth and these half-gods would be born and so on and so forth. This was their idea. It's a pagan idea. It's not a monotheistic idea. Which, by the way, indicates that really Christianity is so much of it taken from paganism. Anyway, I don't want to get, because I, get, I could go quite far into talking about that. But it's another topic. So the Son of God. Okay, so we say, most Christians, you actually say, no, 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 we don't believe that God. Of course we don't believe God is, you know, that Jesus literally is the actual, but you know, literally begotten Son of God. So we say, well, what do you mean? Do you mean God adopted Jesus as a son? Again, it doesn't make any sense. Let me give you an example. Right? If I bought with me today a goldfish. Yeah? I have a little thing. and I bring with me a goldfish. And I say, everybody, um, this is Jonah, my son. So it's a, it's a goldfish. Well, he's, he's my son. He eats with me at the table. The, uh, the, he has a bedroom in the house. And according to the new adoption laws that they've just passed in England, very liberal, he, he, the, the papers are coming through next week. He's my son. Now, you, you would say, look, that's a fish. You're a human being. You can't have a fish as your son. Because the fish is not like you. But let me ask another question then. How is a human being like God? The human beings who are specks on an earth that is a speck. In fact, isn't it true that I am actually more like a fish than I'm like God? Isn't it true that any human being has more similarity to a fish than they have to God? You see, the fish is born and the fish dies. Human beings are born and human beings die. The fish need to eat and they need to get rid of what they eat. Human beings need to eat and they get rid of what they eat. Right? The limit, the vision of the fish is limited. My vision is limited. The fish can only remember so much. I can only remember so much. My knowledge is limited. My powers are limited. My ability is limited. This is what I share in common with the fish. Whereas God, his seeing is without limit. His knowledge is perfect. God is never born and God never ties. God is eternal. How am I like God? In what way am I like God? 